for more on the convention, let's go to Chris Prudhomme. He's president of Sun Vision Strategies. It's a company that advises on outreach and communications. Chris, thanks so much for joining sure. us. Uh, first, I want to ask you, uh, as a Republican, your expectations for the RNC this week and what it might look like and <coughs> feel like this year. So I think it's obviously going to be a very different type of convention, right? I mean, I mean, it's uh, virtual. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be very robust. Uh, I mean, you have a full slate of people, Senator Tim Scott, Marshall Blackburn, Kim Klasick, uh, Jerron Smith, uh, who are all top and prominent officials, uh, obviously in the Trump administration, senators, et cetera. I think this is going to be very policy-driven, very uh, people-driven. It's going to come back to focus on policies that the president has done. You have folks like Jerron Smith, uh, who's over criminal justice reform for President Trump, a uh, good friend of mine, and, and, he, and he's African-American. Uh, so I think he's probably going to focus on you know, the, the minority community and real actual policy change. I don't think people are, what, are going to look at uh, the things that President Trump says. A lot of times people talk about his rhetoric or his tweets. People like Jerron Smith and Senator Tim Scott are going to focus, as they're both minorities, are going to focus on what he has done for the uh, minority community and what he is planning to do. Those are going to be the points that are, I think, very essential and that are a key focus. That's what this is going to be about this year. Trump has said he's done more for black Americans than any other president. You're a black Republican. Do sure. you believe him? I certainly do. I, I think he's done a substantial uh, a bit, uh, obviously, in recent times, uh, other than any recent president. When you look at the first step back, uh, it's quite phenomenal. He's given the opportunity for NBA and NFL players to uh, bring anybody they have to the table. He's actually said, bring me a list. Of, of individuals who were wrongfully in prison, and let's work to get them out. Look at what's happened with Alice Johnson. Uh, I mean, it, it's just it's just a phenomenal opportunity to be had. Done. Uh, we look at the first step back, specifically speaking about uh, reducing sentencing for lower level offenders, uh, not having women, excuse me, women shackled uh, while they're giving birth in prison. Um, these are just all the different things that have transpired. Look at HBCU funding that he has done, uh, giving money to HBCUs and has en enhanced uh, the money for community development out of HBCUs, opportunity zones. He's obviously have, has made that very robust. So there's a tremendous amount of things that he has done that I think they're going to remind people about uh, in this convention. That's what I think this is going to be about. An incumbent often faces one question, which is, is the voter's life better now than it was four years ago? Do you right. think black Americans can overwhelmingly say yes? So I think that things are certainly, uh, from a very granulated point of view, uh, yes. I, I think, generally speaking, uh, that life is better. Obviously, we have a great issue with social injustice. Nobody can deny that. Nobody cannot deny that we have an issue with community and law enforcement uh, together. There's a big divide. Uh, I'm working myself to help bridge that gap on that. Uh, so that cannot be denied at all. COVID-19 has taken a big effect. Uh, um, and the economy has taken, a, obviously, a big effect. You have 40 million people facing eviction. So that is tough. Outside of those extenuating circumstances that it cannot be controlled by the Trump administration, President Trump himself, obviously, yes. Uh, I do think that things uh, have, been, have been much better off. You have a, you have a tax break, $24,000. Uh, tax-free for a newly married couple. Uh, it's, it's things like that, that 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 have taken place that I think the president has done to substantially uh, benefit people on a, on a more, much more uh, general level. Given the Biden-Harris momentum at the moment, would you advise the Trump campaign to do anything differently going forward? Well, you know, look, look I would say continue to do what they do. Uh, there's a lot of folks who are not pleased with Biden's pick. If you look on social media, uh, look at what the people are saying. Don't just look at the political consultants or people like myself. Look at what the people are saying. And I consider myself pretty uh, down to earth and pretty in touch with uh, with both sides. Uh, and when you look at what the people are saying, just on my social media alone, people are extremely upset. They were not enthusiastic about Kamala Harris at all. Uh, Kamala Harris did not have a, 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 a strong background. Uh, she did not have a, 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 a great thought process in, in terms of minorities. It just wasn't, it wasn't effective at all. Uh, people were very, very upset by her pick. Look at her background with prosecution in California. Look how many minorities that she put away uh, uh, when it comes to low-level offenders, marijuana. I mean, so she's done a lot that people are, are obviously are very agitated about. She, is, she advocates for minorities, and she advocates for, obviously, lower imprisonment, but she put the numerous thousands of, of minorities in prison. These are the issues that people are going to have with Kamala Harris, and uh, let alone there's many other reasons about her, but this is certainly not a good pick. As you can see, he did not have a bump in pose with Kamala Harris, the vice president, former vice president Biden.